the holidays are coming. That means that there's a lot of chaos about to happen and our kitchens are the hub of the home. And so taking a little time to set up your kitchen right now is going to help simplify and ease the chaos later, right? It's going to make it all easier. And I want to talk in terms of the system of the kitchen. I think of a house as having many systems that are made up of other subsystems. And the kitchen pantry systems are really the most important to the house, I believe. Um, it's where we nurture and support ourselves. It's where um, the day starts. It's where the day often ends. And having it set up properly so that it's easy to use makes everything easier. And it affects all the other systems because of the grocery shopping, which is part of the pantry aspect. You know, you got to replenish things. So you have to have some figuring out of what that's going to look like. And that often flows into other systems in the house, the laundry or the clothes or the bathroom stuff. So that's why I want to start with the kitchen, especially around the holidays. Um, so really the kitchen is all about keeping yourself fed and nourished and hydrated, right? That's basically what a kitchen is for. But there are the subsets of the system of the kitchen. And that would be, there's cooking, there is feeding, there is um, storing, and there is cleaning of the things in your kitchen. So start with that thought that you have to cover those zones, if you will, or those areas of um, activity that happen within the kitchen, right? Um, there's very fine tuning of further subsystems to those, but we'll, that's for another day. Today we're staying kind of high level so you can get a handle on it quickly for the holidays and start thinking about how you can eliminate the friction, the things in the way of these subsystems, right? So what does cooking actually involve? And it's always that reverse engineering thing. What does it take to do the cooking? What's involved in that? What is the reverse engineering that we need to do about that, right? You need a heat source. You need some pots and pans. You need some things that'll stir. You need some um, prepping of the ingredients. You need the ingredients. You need to have them on hand. And you probably need a way to measure those ingredients when you add them to a recipe, right? Actual combining of the ingredients. Does that require some sort of appliance or not? Um, so think about the cooking. And by cooking, I include baking. So with the holidays coming up, I know that's of utmost concern, right? How are you going to make baking easier? Well, it's part cooking. You're putting some ingredients together. You're adding some heat. And voila, you get to serve some cookies, which is the next subsystem, right? The feeding. How do you feed? Feeding involves taking the food from the prepped pot and putting it on a plate or a vessel that you can then consume from, correct? Um, of course, it doesn't have to be a plate. It could be a lunchbox. It could be a paper towel. It could be a napkin. It could be a glass. It could be a shake jar, whatever they are. Um, but what is involved in the feeding? You need some vessels and you need some utensils and a way to transfer from the pots to those things, right? We're talking basics here. But I bet you never thought about it that way when you started putting your kitchen together, did you? So I want you to just consider that if you think about it from the systems perspective and reverse engineer what you actually need, it's going to be easier to declutter and let go of the extra stuff in the way, okay? Then the next subsystem is storing. You actually need to store the inventory of pots and pans and utensils and measuring things um, and appliances somewhere in the kitchen. You also need a place to store the ingredients so they're easy to find when you need them. There may be a few other things in the kitchen that need to be stored, cookbooks or um, beverages and, and the beverage stuff. But basically, it's all about how are you going to store the things you need to make the food in the kitchen and what? how are you going to store the things you need to serve the people, right? Um, the other part of the storing is don't forget the leftovers. 
or the partially used ingredients? What is the food storage situation all about? Is it just wraps and bags? Is it just a gazillion mason jars? Is it some Tupperware? Where is your, um, how are you gonna store things and how are you gonna make that as sustainable as possible? Because that tends to be the second largest area of waste in the kitchen is the storage of said food. <laughs> so think about that. What's your process going to be? How can you make it easier? Um, you know, there's the the magic triangle in a kitchen where you're cooking, you're gathering the stuff from the fridge, the ingredients from the fridge, you're making it somewhere between the fridge and the stove, and then you're moving it back to the sink for some basic cleanup, and then it's got to go back into the fridge. So where's the storage going to be near the fridge or near the sink or near the table where, you know, think about what your flow is all about and, and work from there. The last subsystem in the kitchen that's important, especially at this time of year, is the cleaning. How many cleaning things do you have in your kitchen? Specific specialized cleaning things. It's a great time of year to start using up what you bought for a very specific single purpose and letting the rest go or using up the single use items and then moving towards multi-purpose items um, farther down the road. So it's time to line up your cleaning products, use up all the partially filled bottles um, and, and keep in mind that cleaning in the kitchen is about safe preparation of the food. So how can you hygienically keep your kitchen clean without adding a bunch of extra chemicals that accidentally end up in your food. So make sure we have uh, some towels and dish rags or sponges or scrubbers or mops, whatever you need, but not so many that they're in the way or interacting with food. So it's just a good time to go through and clean out all the excess of that as well. So with these distinctions in mind, it's really a great time to actually do a little bit of decluttering, right? Actually review the ingredients in your pantry and in your fridge and really make sure you have all the food you need for the holiday um, season and to eliminate any of the expired ingredients. Now, I'm not hard and fast about it expires on the date on the can, except in a few instances. And one of the ones that my clients never believe me about is baking um, baking powder. It, it will affect the actual rising of your baked goods. So that's the one I for sure stick to. And anything that's off color uh, in the pantry. Also notice um, we tend to have a lot of things in our pantry that were from gift, gift baskets from last holiday season. <laughs> It means they weren't appealing enough for you to even try a fancy thing. And so it might be time to let those go. Um, it's not great to re-gift food because it's going to be very closer to the um, expiration date. And some people do get nervous about it. So just make sure that if it's something that's been in there for a whole year that you haven't even tried, it might be time to let that go so you can have room in the pantry for the things you actually use, like, eat. Um, yeah, unliked ingredients and, uh, and avoided, um, gift items, usually a bunch of marinades, rubs, seasoning packets, that kind of thing. Um, all right. It's also a great time to match up those lids to your pots and pans and your food storage containers and eliminate any of the excess, the warped, the, um, mismatched things in that area too. And then review your utensil drawer. What are the single use items that never actually get used and you can make do with something else? Seriously, you do not need two different food processors, three blenders, a salad shooter, a multi box grater, a multi grater that goes into a tub that has a lid. You don't need 20 graters. You don't need all of those things. What you need is a good pair of knives. <laughs> pair of knives, a set of knives, shall we say, and maybe a food processor, maybe a blender, but duplicates of those things or buying a new gadget that does something one of your old gadgets already does, not needed. Get rid of the extra so you can find the one you need when you need it. 
Um, also, while you're at it, look at your dishes and glassware for anything that's chipped or broken or so mismatched you never get to use it um, and move it to the serving area if it's something you still love. Um, and time to let go of the promotional items. I'm so baffled how many adults, yes, adults, have um, a whole set of cups from some promotional thing like big gulps or, um, okay. I will say a lot of my clients do have some, some tie in collectibles, but those are slightly different than just having a bunch of random plastic wear just so you don't break your glasses. Why not just use your glasses and pay more attention and not break them because you're storing a bunch of plastic, just time to let it go move it over to the kids art supply area so they can rinse their um, brushes. Okay. Um, I already talked about the cleaning supplies. I have notes right here. <laughs> um, and, oh, the other thing, you're going to find all kinds of weird holiday themed things when you go through your kitchen, the towels, the pot holders, um, maybe some napkin rings and some napkins whatever it is, time to evaluate and gather all those holiday things that get stuck in the kitchen for next year. Go ahead and see if it's something you're actually going to use or if it's a good time to let it go because someone else might enjoy it this holiday season. Okay. Um, there's going to be a lot more insight on how to declutter more specifically when you get into all your drawers and cabinets and your pantry in the upcoming um, master declutter masterclass. Uh, the next one's happening on Thursday, uh, the 16th. And so you can sign up for that at morethanorganized.net and um, check out the blogs as well. There's there's um, a lot of good decluttering device, advice, device. <laughs> Maybe it is a device. I don't know. I seem to be a little bit giddy this morning. So check out the Declutter Masterclass for more insights and I'll see you next week. Don't forget to like, follow, subscribe, tell all your friends, share the knowledge. And in the meantime, have a delightful day.